It's all the way back to base. And he's got the Helm of Iron Will at least for some of that regen coming through. The river up top, Lelouch. Okay. Has enough mana for the Laguna Blade. Wymon's gonna at least be able to get the Tombstone out before he dies at Whiteborn. They don't even get the kill on the Undying in our T1. They can move towards the Lelouch at the mouth of the pit as Topson finds first blood on the Ark Warden. At least able to get the Tombstone of the Faceless Void to some extent, at least until he's got the Maelstrom. It does feel like it's going to be very similar here for Polaris, where it just comes down to their pickup potential. And we might see that be the case as top lane force, but look at the bait. Anna, they were ready in the tree line. He gets the double chrono. Now Tempest double will join the party. They'll target down the Skyrath Mage first, and now they can look to avoid force, however. Anna. He's able to bring down Arna before they secure the kill. Ooh, Some incredible the toggle. Arna toggles from Force. He'll do it again. The Marcia will reign supreme throughout the skirmish. Beautifully done from Force. Some Occasionally, e where Cuckoo, as great of a player as he is. Force is going to be in some trouble top, I think. They tip it in one and Zephyr's under cover of the Invis. He does have the lean, so the sky behind her at the moment. Might be able to get a rebound target to back to safety, but... The chain control is perfect from T1 along with the damage. This will open up bottom now as Cuckoo's also going to be in some trouble. Oh no, they missed the stun though. They will not have the opportunity to be able to TP out. The curse can always stop that. Oh, oh my no! Lord. Uh, let's see if he goes for a TP out. I think they'll still have the damage to get the kill afterwards. And it looks like they will. Cuckoo's not even going to make the attempt. They might lose AU. Golden Braze will buy him some time. But in the end, at least they get the T1 tower here for Cuckoo. Do indeed, in this super vulnerable position that isn't exactly so. And look at the vision they have on T1. The Hawk and the lane scouts them out. Xavier's going to go on the tree line, force down to the south, and the TP from AU. They want to fight, but T1, they brought the numbers to the skirmish. A Bramble will hold back AU for the moment. A Curse going to be able to cover the retreat. Do they consider about going back in on Polaris instead? It's going to be the Arc Warden that gets the kill. And they won't even have to commit to try and help out. Now Natsumi with the song. Can he catch up to Cuckoo? Now with the bonus movement speed, he will be able to close the distance and Lelouch can fall with the LSA as well. Cuckoo attempts to try and disrupt this with the roar, but it's not going to be there fast enough as Polaris beautifully done. They bring the numbers to take the skirmish. They find a two-for-one trade and can now look to take the tier one tower. Misstep from Polaris at the start. Not going to be able to net them another kill. Finally, they'll deward. They've got a lane ward though. Might catch T1 off guard. Let's still see. I don't know. It feels like there's a lot of T1 reinforcements here. Although they're gonna jump in straight towards Arna. They go with the Mystic Flare. Four. They won't even need it. Force has got too much damage out of the Unleash. Now they're gonna chase down more as AU. No messing around. A curse for Whitemon. A Laguna Blade as well for good measure. Why not drop a couple of ultimates just to do the mental damage? Realizing that they don't really need the few days. No. I'm really intrigued when Natsumi's gonna consider the scepter. I, I think it's an incredible item, and from what I've heard as well, can also hold that thought Thompson. mid lane, Topson. Oh, they're just baiting. Look at the turnaround from Zephyr. A terrorize onto two. The curse crown as well for good measure. Natsumi considering with the ultimate, but he doesn't get it off. He pump faked the song, and now is gonna be in with the corner. The bash is into the roar as the chain control is ever so perfect from T1. So they get the first kill into the second, and now they can look to put some pressure. That's the thing, right? Like, he was literally about one and a half minutes just sitting in that tree line, but Polaris, even more patient. Able to catch him out. Thompson, he's going for the rap play. Might be trying to kill Xavius here, but Hold It Brace should be able to save him, although. They're gonna move in. The Bedlam from Zephyr gets the kill, but uh, <laughs> kind of sacrifices his own life, and it feels like in the end, Polaris, they're happy with that. You get the Tempest double gold, you get the kill onto Zephyr as well, and they might go high. Ideal pick off for them. No, but it does mean that if you use the Beastmaster Hawk, then you could find a, a better target, right? And then you're really not as worried about dropping the Chronosphere. So all the while that Maybe. AU is playing away from the team, they're just like, well, a choke point. We play. That's a lot of vision. Arna, oh, they're all crewed up, but the Chrono, it's on to two. The Wyvern's not going to be nearby to protect him. Force tried to jump in to chuck him out, but he wasn't able to do so. Arna, though, he's got to be cautious. A time walk out to the right side. The VKP will hold the back.
for the moment. The bash just from Force locks him into place. Honest has a time walk to play with, but the BKB is expired, so now they can get on top of the faceless void and bring him down. And meanwhile, they've lost out Topson as well. All the claws are come crumbling on T1. And now they'll finally deal with Whitemon as well in the back line as Polaris. They're just too far ahead. T1, they don't have the answer to them. And indeed, the small wall around the triangle is protecting Polaris. Fine for their ultimate to come back. Oh, and now Radiant. The Lush is very far on the oh, front right line. On. Arna's going to be there. Natsumi, he doesn't have the song once again, but the terrorist follow up as well. They might finally be able to kill off the Lena. As Arna secures the first kill, they're even going to look to buy that. What a curse on the back line. Holding three into place. It'll buy them time to now to address the faceless void issue. They haven't got it on top of Topson though. The Arc Warden still playing inside the river, starting to sack up the damage. Lelouch, you've got to be cautious. You just bought back. But a BKB, he can fly himself out to safety, but Thompson doesn't have the same capability as Natsumi locks onto his target. Can now try and get the ensnare out onto the TPing out undying, but we'll just... And now Force is going on for more. What a incredible Marcy performance coming through for the offlaner on Polaris. I've been incredibly impressed with how he's been able to start these fights time and time again for the boys on Radiant. And it looks like we will be getting a game three out of this series. I mentioned that he would just need to do a little bit too much to be able to, to pull it off for them. And I mean, he is delivered in spades. They're going to try for this last defense coming through. Terrorize keeps getting pumped back. They want to try and wait for Ana to be respawning. Maybe now they need to use that Terrorize. Gives them a little bit of time. Just feel like they're going to be lacking oh, the damage still, though. Curse. curse again. Oh, a beautiful curse to close this one out as Polaris taking game two. Then I am incredibly impressed. I said it towards the end, but I felt like Force was a big reason of why they're able to take this game. You know, if he wasn't able to make those cute individual plays underneath the T1 tower up top,